In that last video, I touched on this property called the uniqueness property that said if I had the exact same base raised to two different powers, that can only happen, and they were equal, that can only happen if the two powers were the same. Well, if I remember that f of x is some exponential function b to the x power, what this uniqueness property translates to is this little situation here that says the function value at p equals the function value at q if and only if p equals q for every element in the domain of function f. So I'm saying that the two y values are equal if and only if the two x values are equal that generated those y values. And if you remember what we talked about in terms of inverses, that means that the function y equals b to the x or f of x equals b to the x is one to one and therefore has an inverse. So there is indeed an inverse function to exponentiation and that function is called a logarithm. So the logarithm is the inverse of raising something to a power. And we already know quite a bit about logarithms because we learned some things about inverses. And we know some things about exponentials. So let's just look at some example of some random exponential function. Uh, let's look at f of x equals 2x. So the inverse of x is something involving a logarithm and we'll talk about the notation in a second. Here's what we know about the inverse of exponential functions. So looking at the exponential function, we know it has a domain of all reals and a range that's y is greater than zero and it has a horizontal asymptote. And we also know that inverses are reflections through the line y equals x. And when I reflect through y equals x, what happens is the x's and the y swap. So if I think about the domain of a logarithm, they have domains that are x is greater than zero and ranges that are all reals. And instead of having a horizontal asymptote, the logarithmic function is going to have a vertical asymptote. And its shape is the same as the exponential, just reflected through the line y equals x. And here's the notation for the logarithm. So the inverse function specifically for this f of x that was two to the x power is log with a little subscript two in the x. And we read this two ways. You can either read it as base two log of x or log base two of x if you wanna read it in the line of the way the symbols are written. Now here's a little note on notation. I have a big B for base, a big N for some number. They're elements of positive real numbers and the base cannot equal one because you can't have an exponential function with the base of one, that's lame. Um, and here's the connection between exponents and logarithms. So if I have some base raised to the K power, I get some number. So I plug in my exponent and I get some value. Now for the logarithm, you write the word log, you put a subscript b for the base, telling everyone what your base of your exponent was, and then you have the n, and it equals k. So what the logarithm does is you plug in this value here, and it spits out the exponent. So you plug in the n, and it spits out the exponent. So one of the first things that I need to make sure that you can do is switch between these not notations because they're really the same thing. It's just writing it in a different way. This is writing it as an exponent. This is writing it as a logarithm. So let's convert these to the opposite notation. So this is an exponent. So I want to write it as a logarithm. And so I write log. And whatever my base is, it's the little subscript. And then whatever the output was, that's what goes in there. So log base 2, 16 has to spit out the exponent, which is four. Now this one, if I have log base eight of one, so I'm asking what power of eight results in one, I would write zero. And of course you can work this in reverse, and it's actually a really easy way to me to ask you to solve an equation, is to rewrite these. So sometimes if you see this as an equation, a logarithm based equation, you can solve them by just rewriting them as exponents. So that subscript is the base of the exponent. And remember the whole job of the logarithm is to spit out the exponent. And so that exponent is three and the result is x. Now I'm not asking you to solve for x here, I'm just asking you to rewrite it. So 
That would be the logarithm written as an exponent. Similar thing here, x is my base. The logarithm spits out the exponent, so it's x to the sixth power, and the result is 64. Now, like all operations, there are properties that govern them. And the properties for logarithms are actually the same as the properties for exponents, just written in the language and notation of a logarithm instead of an exponent. So just like we have a uniqueness for exponents, we have a uniqueness for logarithms. So if I have two logs of the same base, with two separate values m and n, that's only true if m is equal to n. Now I have the composition, which shows you the relationship between the logarithm and the exponent. And so if I take log base b of b to the kth power, then I get k out. That's the whole point of the logarithm, to give me the exponent. And if I take some base and I raise it to a log base b power, then I'm just going to get that number back out. Because this has to do with the fact that these two functions are inverses. So when you composite them, they undo each other. So raising b to the k power and then asking you to spit out the exponent is just going to give you k. And just like we had exponent rules for ones and zeros, log base b of b is always one because b to the first power is b, and log base b of one is going to be zero because b to the zero power is one. And I know this takes a little bit of getting used to, but remember, the subscript is the base, this output is the exponent, and that is the result. Now we've been talking about having any kind of base that you want, but you may have noticed on your calculator that you just have some log button, and if you've ever played with it, it's just log, and they don't show you an index. Uh, you have to actually go sometimes to the special menus to get something with an index that you can change. So if you don't see an index, it's a logarithm called the common log. And common logs are base 10 logarithms. So if you ever see the word log, without its little subscript. That means it's an understood base of 10 and it's the common log. Not all the logs that you're going to deal with are base 10. Case in point, every single logarithm example I've given you, none of them have been base 10. So what do you do when you're given some base that's not 10? Well, if you have our current version of graphing calculators, then you can actually just plug in a log with any base that you want. You just have to go to the special menus to find it. If you don't have that, you can always use the change of base formula. And in a later class activity, after I teach you some of the more interesting log laws and log properties, I'm going to have you derive this formula. In the meantime, any log base a of x can be converted to whatever log you want you choose the base you want, and then you have two versions of it. You have log base b of x and log base b of your old base a, and these two are actually equivalent. So if I want the decimal approximation of log base 6 of 8 using common logs, meaning base 10 logs, like you just have some scientific calculator that only lets you use base 10, you can use the change of base formula to figure out the decimal approximation. So you know you want to change it to log base 10. And luckily for us, log base 10, we don't have to write the little subscript. And then you have to decide whether it's log 8 or log 6 in the numerator. And the formula tells you it's log 8 and then log 6. So this is the equivalent of log base 6 of 8, log 8 over log 6. And so then you just use your calculator and find this, and you get your approximation.